Welcome to another building history video and I'm sorry it's been so long. Today I'm building a house that actually exists again. This is the resident at Richmond for C. Ali Esquire. Uh, despite being called the resident at Richmond, it's actually in Melbourne East. That picture, by the way, there's a link to it in the description below. And this building was built circa 1888. So this is a Victorian house in Victoria, Australia. <laughs> and you'll notice straight away that I've had to make one pretty major concession to building this in The Sims. As always with townhouses in The Sims, they're on their own block, which always makes me sad. Um, Townhouses really look better next to other buildings. Uh, in the city I grew up in, there was just four townhouses, like Victorian townhouses in town. And they're all in a row next to each other, surrounded by like normal suburban houses. And it just made me a little bit sad that they were all on their own. Um, I love old townhouses like these. I think they're really beautiful. I think they have a lot of character. And especially, I love that you know, these would have all been built around the same time to look pretty similar, but over time, each of these houses has had many different owners and many different people living there, and they just build this really separate character. Um, this version of this townhouse that I'm building is pretty close to what I think it would have looked like when it was originally built. So that little box out the back, that's for the toilet. No indoor toilet in this house. Um, it is fitted with the electric light, which it possibly wouldn't have been in 1888. M might have had gas lighting rather than electric lighting. Um, but I think, I think electric, you, you just need electric lighting in The Sims. It just doesn't work. Like, even with quite big windows in The Sims, everything inside is really, really dark. Uh, that, by the way, <laughs> was the actual house. It's still there in Melbourne. You can go and visit it. Although, that would be a bit weird to turn up and be like, Hi, I saw someone build your house on YouTube. Um, anyway, please don't. Please don't uh, bother the people who live there now. Um, this house... I think it is a great example of a Victorian kind of separation. You can really see in this house something that we wouldn't build, we wouldn't have in a modern house. So if you look at a modern house, the kitchen tends to be large and sort of a focus area for the house. And that's because we tend to cook our own meals. Um, I do notice a trend in some modern apartment buildings to put in a tiny, tiny kitchen like in the back in the corner, which I guess represents um, the change towards like ready meals and less interest in cooking. Um, but in 1888, people who were paying for an architect to design their house, as in this case, were not cooking their own meals. They were paying other people to make them for them. And that means that the major rooms of this house that are the living spaces for the people who commissioned it are, are the big rooms at the front. So the living room, the dining room and the two large bedrooms are for the commissioners of this house. And the, the small bedroom, well... The small bedroom was for the maid or the other live-in servants. And then the um, there would have actually been two small bedrooms. I made one the bathroom because in The Sims you can't make a room with a bath as small as it was originally in this house. Uh, but I think it kind of captures the idea. And then you also have downstairs, the kitchen is like small and off to the side. And it's really, it's a workspace it's not it's not a show space it's not a demonstration space um in a modern house you would have you know we like to have 
granite bench tops or marble bench tops. The look of our kitchens these days is is not just you utilitarian it's it's really a way to show off your wealth and your status and it's a public room whereas in 1888 the kitchen was not a public room it wasn't a private family room in this kind of middle to well really upper class living the kitchen isn't a room that the owner of the house would go in at all it's a service room it's it's the way you would think of the little box that houses your electricity meter or gas meter. It, yes, it's a part of your house, but it's not really your part of your house. And I just find that a really interesting change in how we, how we use our living spaces, um, even in the past sort of 100, 120 30, 40 years, I can do maths. Um, yeah, whereas I think people notice things like the toilet is inside now. I think that's a thing that people are generally aware was different before and that now it, it's seen as pretty, pretty usual to have an indoor toilet. Um, whereas I think the change in status of the kitchen really exemplifies the the end of uh, live-in servants and I think if you find if you look at some houses designed for say the upper class in a really stratified stratified society these days so maybe in UAE or in some parts of India you will still see that in some of those houses there's actually two kitchens so there's one kitchen which is the show kitchen and then there's another kitchen which is the kitchen that is actually used by the maid or the cook or whoever comes in to make food and the other kitchen, the show kitchen, is the one where maybe the mistress of the house or the people in the house do still cook, the people who own it, but they do have that other second kitchen for other people to cook in. Um, yeah, it's an interesting combination of the need for the status symbol kitchen and the uh, and the actually useful kitchen. Um, here I'm trying to squeeze in a grand piano uh, to this space. The grand piano does not want to fit. Uh, of course, an actual grand piano is massive and would probably not fit there either, but that's fine. Uh, a grand piano is also, I think was then and continues to be a status symbol. Um, I think in in sort of the end of the Victorian period and the Edwardian period, an upright piano was a symbol of, of middle class accomplishment. If you could afford an upright piano and then afford to send your daughters to piano lessons and have them play popular hits, you know, before the wide availability of recorded music, um, I think there was a certain level of, of status to that. And then even now there's, you know, a grand piano requires a lot of space. So there's, you know, I can give away all this space to this grand piano and a good grand piano just costs a lot of money, like a really expensive car, a lot of money. I struggle to furnish the kitchens in these older houses because there's really, the kitchens in The Sims are really very modern. Um, very 90s and it's really hard to find things that can represent what would have been in a kitchen then which again you're not getting so much built-in kitchen furniture it's a lot more tables and um, like sideboards and standalone cupboards rather than built-in furniture but I do what I can um, the bedroom above should actually be heated by that range down below so that the servants get a bit of heat Oh, and now I'm heading into the screenshots. So here, yeah, you can really see the space difference between the maid's room <laughs> and the main bedrooms. And like even that bathroom is basically the same size as the maid's bedroom. And then downstairs again, there's that repeat of the public 
demonstration spaces compared to the workaday spaces. So thanks. Bye. <laughs>